we've titled this presentation Building Business Resilience uh, Through Digital Transformation. And for both ourselves and for Mitra, and I'll talk about Alliance, our alliance in a second, uh, we were effectively thinking about how can we help our clients and potential clients move forward in what has become the new normal. Um, I'm very wary of 2020 going down as having the tagline the year of COVID-19. I much prefer to think of it as the, the year of adversity. And then when I think about adversity, I think about all the, the marvellous qualities that we have around, uh, I guess, dedication, around determination, around innovation um, and around compassion. And I hope that through the presentation today and what's shared particularly by the Mitra Innovation team, um, you'll see all of those qualities coming through in how we're trying to help all of our clients, uh, you know, make their businesses prosper and be successful as we come out of, of, of this adversity. Um, so the, the partnership is a fairly new one. Uh, it's forged on a relationship that the, uh, that the owner of TechWise uh, formed with directors of Mitra Innovation over the last couple of years. And what it's really about is TechWise has a really strong desire to have new and different conversations with our clients. We try to do as much as we can, but we obviously have a limited scope. And for us, the, 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 the alliance with Mitra is very much about allowing us to be part of very different conversations that are really more about your business and your business process. And, you know, Mitra have global expertise and I won't steal their thunder at all here, but you'll see that they have global expertise and they have local runs on the board. Uh, you'll see some of the companies that they've already worked with and, you know, made their businesses better. And so we're hopeful uh, that, they can, that they can also do that for you. So that's the reason for the partnership. Um, other than that, all I really want to talk about in terms of the objectives for today is that we've got, collectively, we've got three key objectives. The first is that we can actually share some information with you all that is relevant and helpful to your organisation. The second objective is that um, it allows or, or can perhaps provoke some thoughts or ideas around possible new ways for your organisations to move forward that we can be part of. And the third thing is that we collectively get a much better, you know, dare I say it, and more intimate understanding of each of your organisations and, and the challenges that you are all facing and how we can then uh, move forward with you and help you overcome those challenges to, you know, achieve greater success and do things in, in different or better ways. So that's enough for me. I, I, you know, this isn't about me today. It's about you as our clients and about Mitra learning more about you as clients. So what I'd like to do now is pass over to Chinti, Chinti Wirasinghe. Chinti is the CEO at Mitra Digital Services. And then uh, after Chinti shares some great information with you, Sanjeev Palawadana will also then talk. And uh, so I'll pass over to Chinti. All right, thank you so much, Sean. Thank you so much, Sean, for that uh, introduction and uh, talking. Uh, attendees through the partnership. We're really looking forward to it. Um, to get us started, I'm going to have uh, Sanjeev, who is our COO, actually talk about the global impact of COVID-19. Sanjeev, over to you. Thank you, Cynthia, and good afternoon to all our participants. Uh, so uh, when we talk about the global impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, I think uh, you know, all of our participants are very intimately aware of the unprecedented disruption and unprecedented chaos that the the pandemic has has brought about in its wake. Uh, everything from uh, minor supply chain in disruptions to significant liquidity challenges to you know worrying about uh, revenue leakage and worrying about uh, the value of corporations. So I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but uh, it, it's in that context that I want to talk about. Uh, now, while all of these challenges would be fairly common, uh, uh, pretty much universally across organizations and industries, how each industry will come out of these challenges will vary significantly. It could depend uh, largely based on the industry itself, but also based on how organizations choose to respond uh, to the crisis. 
and and in that context we will focus around uh, those two topics we will also look uh, in more depth about how technology can assist in that response uh, particularly around uh, digitization and digital transformation um as you are aware technology has already uh, played a, a vital role in in the recovery uh, for many organizations um as as satya nadella had uh, pointed out the, the ceo of microsoft uh digital digitization uh, in the consumer space as well as the business space has uh, leapfrogged uh, by about 2 years in the space of the first 2 months post uh, post covid and uh, in fact mckenzie goes on to say that it's leapfrogged by about 5 years so that's the extent to which uh, digitization has taken place and has supported organizations in in recovering and responding to to this pandemic as organizations look for look towards new ways of working but also uh, new ways of doing business uh, globally uh now in addition to all of these challenges that are uh, set forth by the uh, the pandemic itself there has been another silent uh revolution that has taken place over the last couple of years uh, and this is the the fourth industrial revolution uh, and this has also kind of added to the the rapid response that uh, that organizations are Uh, are doing in terms of uh, reacting to to the current crisis and uh, things such as uh, you know the internet of things business intelligence artificial intelligence 5g etc have have uh, you know been brought together in the form of solutions such as uh, virtual learning uh, telemedicine uh, telecommuting etc that have helped uh, part of the part of the response and part of the transformation um if you look at the, the the details in in a little bit more detail in terms of how uh, the industry would potentially emerge from some of these challenges uh, ernst and young have done some uh, some research around this and they broadly categorize um industries to to fall under four broad buckets based on how they emerge uh, post covid uh the the first bucket is what you see on the left hand side on the slide uh, which is called the strong uh this uh, essentially talks about industries that have already begun to reap the benefits of uh, of the chaos uh, so to say uh, you know industries such as consumer technology healthcare and health tech uh, e-commerce industries uh, media streaming companies such as uh, netflix and apple apple tv for example they have already seen some benefits in in terms of their business uptick and and they they will continue to see this it will be an enduring uh, upside for for these businesses and therefore will be categorized as strong and they will continue to remain as strong contenders and strong players within their industries in the for- foreseeable future the second bucket of industries actually before i move on let me just give you a quick example of something that we ourselves have done to to become a player in in this industry in this segment called the strong so mitra innovation um, as an organization uh, introduced a product called dynamedics which is uh, essentially a platform that is used uh, for for remote consultations for for medical professionals uh and it could be for regular consultations or general practitioners or even for specialized uh consultations such as uh, mental health uh, consultations so we have now uh, rolled this product out to to various medical professionals and institutions so that they could continue with their business in spite of all the the challenges that they have and also to large enterprises uh, across the globe uh, so that they could use this platform uh to to make sure that the the health and well-being of of their employees are taken care of so you know this is part of the duty of care uh, responsibility that that organizations have and, and and this product is already well and truly uh on its way to to helping organizations uh, across the world 
Um, moving on to the second bucket, the transformed. So this is uh, uh, a set of uh, industries and organizations that would have initially been challenged uh, by uh, the, the crisis, but have managed to transform their, themselves through innovation, through digital transformation, etc., and come out uh, stronger and better. Uh, some examples would include uh, real estate, uh, particularly around uh, the commercial real estate, where you know the whole concept of teams and departments having to be co-located is being rethought, and 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 the demand for uh, commercial real estate in in popular cities uh, have plummeted overnight uh, ever since uh, the coronavirus. So uh, the uh, organizations in this space are now rethinking how to deal with this kind of challenge. Uh, there are it's like hot disks uh, being introduced at a rapid rate. Uh, there are, you know, uh, buildings being repurposed and, and technology being used across to, to facilitate uh, things like hot disks. Uh, if you look at, uh, for example, the food industry, you know, that is going through a complete transformation uh, where, you know, sitting down for a meal uh, in, a, in a popular restaurant is no longer the most attractive option for people. And so, uh, you know, new things are emerging like cloud kitchens, for example, uh, which is uh, essentially virtual uh, kitchens that deliver food to your food to your doorstep. So, you know, this would also have an in indirect impact on uh, the real estate industry once again, because, you know, restaurant space no longer will be in having the same kind of demand that uh, that you would see. Uh, manufacturing industry, uh, you know, will will go through uh, demand constraints and will have to tighten their belts. They will have to look at smart factories. They will look, have to look at you know supply chain, tighter supply chain integration, uh, digital twins to make sure that they are resilient to to breakdowns in operations because of uh, situations like this, etc. Uh, and therefore require a lot of digital transformation and technology support. Again, I can give you an example of something that uh, we worked on uh, in, in the space of the gaming industry, where, uh, you know, an industry that has uh, hitherto been by and large limited to, uh, you know, gaming halls and casinos have now been transformed as a result of this pandemic. And now we have helped uh, one of our clients as an example to take the gaming industry to their customers at their, at their homes yeah, using smart devices. So this is the kind of um, organization and industry that we are talking about in uh, this second bucket uh, under transformed. Um, moving on to the third bucket, which is the reshape bucket. Now, this is typically the kind of organization or industry that is um, that was cash rich up until uh, the recent crisis and now things have changed. For example, the oil and gas industry, you know, the, the demand for oil and gas plummeted as a result of the reduction in travel, uh, as an example, and then, um, you know, as a result, profitability plummeted and the industry itself now has to tighten, tighten all belts, uh, become a lot more lean and reshape themselves uh, in order to survive uh, in, in, in the post-COVID world. Finally, you have the last bucket, which is called the uncertain uh, bucket. Now, these are industries that are most severely hit uh, by uh, the pandemic and by the disruption. Industries such as travel and tourism, uh, who are currently going through a very uncertain time. Um, but even for those organizations, uh, digital transformation will uh, offer opportunities to, to really move into the transformed category in some cases. And a good example would be uh, the mice industry, which is a sub-vertical within tourism uh, for meetings, conferences, and exhibitions, uh, where people are now talking about uh, virtual conferences and virtual exhibitions using virtual reality and augmented reality so that you know these things can be done in a, a lot more distributed manner maintaining social distancing etc and avoiding uh, a lot of long distance travel uh, so if you look at uh, cnn for example you'd see a lot of these um, advertisements about um, the mice industry coming up with uh, new solutions to have this kind of uh, virtual 
uh, virtual events. So that's uh, at a very high level how uh, we anticipate uh, different industries and different organizations within the industries would come out of uh, the the crisis. Now, having said that, uh, it is not entirely dependent on uh, on the industry itself. It will also, by and large, depend on how organizations respond to the crisis and how they will uh, use the di you know digitization and digital transformation in that response uh, th that is going to be key and that's going to be the focus of the the next slide uh, if you can please move to the next slide okay so um, in terms of a response to uh, the crisis um, there are three key uh, responses that, that that are being generally talked about um, this uh, has been uh, coined in, in multiple different ways. Uh, Gartner calls it respond, recover, and renew. Uh, ENY calls it now, next, and beyond. Uh, either way, we're talking about um, uh, three very distinct uh, uh, parts of uh, your response. The first part, the now or the respond part, is really about crisis management, about stopping the bleeding, making sure that your critical business functions are operational, making sure that your people are safe, etc. Now, um, hopefully most organizations are beyond this already. Uh, however, what we've seen is, you know, as we work with our clients in helping helping them, uh, you know, get through this phase that, that different organizations were at different levels in terms of their maturity and capability to deal with this kind of situation. And we see some organizations that, that um, were able to get out of this fairly quickly while others are still struggling to to get through this initial phase uh, you know in in terms of uh, for example moving into cloud infrastructure etc you know having better teleconferencing capabilities uh, and so on and so forth uh, again our, our dynamics product is a good example of something that we have introduced for too many of our clients uh, to solve some of these challenges especially in the health industry itself where for example, medical health professionals could not carry on their regular business as usual in the absence of uh, a platform for tele teleconsultations, uh, and then you ended up using platforms like Dynamics to to overcome those challenges. Um, once the initial response is done and you are able to make sure that your people are safe and your critical business functions are, you know, operational organizations move into the recover phase. Uh, I believe many organizations at this point in time are, are operating in this phase, if not iterating between uh, these phases. Um, when it comes to recovery, the focus is on, you know, expanding your business operations from beyond just the absolute critical activities to, uh, you know, getting as far as possible close to business as usual. Uh, you know, there will be a lot more planning involved, a lot more scalable uh, functions being restored. But the focus will also be around operational improvements and business process optimizations, etc. To make sure that your balance sheet um, is, is, is in good shape and also that your, your PNF is trending in the right direction um, during this phase. Uh, now, we do a lot of work with uh, practically all of our clients around uh, this area. We have various tools and technologies that we use, uh, things like uh, low-code, no-code platforms that enable us to do business process optimization fairly quickly. Uh, you know, we do various other things like, uh, you know, introducing play payment platforms to improve efficiencies, uh, e-commerce integrations to you know enable faster transactions etc so that uh, you know the organizations can get back to a semblance of no no normalcy in this current uh, environment um, now the organizations that have really been able to come out of this strong uh, if you go back to the the, the, the previous uh, uh, the slide uh, as an example are the ones that have uh, Sorry, you said you don't need to move. Uh, sorry, I'm just making a reference. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So the organizations that have, have really made a difference, both for themselves as well as the the organization that they are, um, or the industry that they operate in, are the ones that have basically re- leaped from through the recovery process into what ENY, uh, sorry, Gartner calls the renew process, or ENY calls uh, the beyond uh, phase uh, of adaption, and this is really where. Uh, the new normal has already begun to set in where organizations are rethinking their strategies based on the lessons learned through the recovery process uh, by uh, looking at uh, emerging patterns uh, by by really rethinking their strategies in an agile uh, flexible way and redefining a new foundation for the business um, and these are the companies that we feel will uh, really succeed and will come out um, as market leaders uh, in, in their respective industries. Uh, we have several examples of, uh, of many of, of companies that we work with uh, as part of our clientele who have um, begun to do this at least. Uh, one such example is a, a large uh, health insurance organization in in the United States, one of the largest. Um, uh, they have used uh, conversational AI to to transform the way they do customer service through their call centers uh, by being able to use um, artificial intelligence in their call centers and be able to have a, a human like interaction with with their customers to 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 resolve their queries, etc. Uh, so, you know, this is essentially setting a new trend in in the industry and basically completely transforming the way customer service is done, uh, reducing cost of operations while at the same time increasing uh, customer satisfaction in, in the industry. So, you know, like I said, you know, these are the guys that will set the trend and be the, be the, the leaders in the industry as they emerge from <clears throat> this situation. Now, each industry, each organization, or even each department or activity may may move between these phases at different paces and at different uh, levels, depending on the country that you operate in, depending depending on the industry, the organization, as well as the department. Uh, And there may be two or three um, ways in which, uh, you know, you will progress in in this new normal. Um, In some cases, you will see that certain activities will be reduced or retired. This may not necessarily be a bad thing. For example, you would, you know, we have seen many of our clients requesting for cloud migrations, uh, retiring the locally maintained server infrastructure and legacy applications and moving into SaaS models. So in this case, uh, uh, you know, retiring and reducing is actually a good thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have you will also see organizations and departments wanting to return to the pre-pandemic status quo. This is again not a bad thing, uh, you know, and and will be perhaps the uh, the default place to go to, especially if you are in an uh, in a perfect competitive, perfectly competitive environment. But again, uh, organizations that uh, that really uh, take up the challenge and renew themselves and reinvent themselves will create opportunities to rescale uh, their organizations really you know scale their business and go into markets and segments that they never operated in before uh, by and large because of the learnings through the uh, through the, the crisis and and that is where uh, most organizations will aspire to be in if, if the industry and the circumstances support it. So what does it take to achieve this? Well, it takes a, a few things. Uh, obviously, a very keen mindset and a deliberate effort to to leapfrog from the recover phase to the renew phase and to, to reinvent yourself based on the learnings is crucial. Uh, willingness to adapt new technologies and really consider digital transformation opportunities that have come about as a result of everything that's changing in the marketplace is 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 crucial uh being very agile in in your decision making and your business strategy in being able to have a continuous 
strategic planning process and take regular feedback as you evolve through this process is very important. And if you do all of these things, you know, you will you will be able to leapfrog into the renew phase and you will be benefit from um, high high performance, both in terms of uh, market share uh, and and uh, growth in, in terms of industry. Um, what this will also do is it will provide you resilience in terms of dealing with the crises of this nature, uh, you know, unplanned crises in the future, you know, be it a, re, uh, a second or third wave of the same crisis or be it another, you know, unanticipated crisis, you know, your ability to learn and leapfrog into that uh, kind of mindset will give you uh, unprecedented uh, resilience as an organization. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in terms of uh, digital transformation in this new age and in the new novel. Uh, Chinti will take over and talk to you about our capabilities in more detail uh, as to how we can facilitate this process for you. But before we do that, we would like to pause for a moment and uh, go into a quick poll. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sanjeev. Let's start the poll. It's really interesting. Uh, and uh, and you see the polls coming up on your right. If you can spend a few minutes to respond to that, we are greatly appreciate it. I think it's very interesting. I think in any situation, whatever the challenge is, um, I think there's opportunity. Uh, and, uh, and I think it will be interesting to see how many of our participants on this call actually have leverage the situation that came out of it, uh, you know, through the pandemic uh, and created an opportunity around it, right? I think in a great, in, in, in a lot of senses, uh, it became an equalizer uh, and digitization more so becomes uh, an equalizer. If you think about, you know, the age old story of Uber, you know, they started a business purely on a digital platform, not owning a single taxi but they're in the taxi service business. So digitization becomes an equalizer and situations like this more so. So it would be really fantastic for us to find out uh, how many of our participants on this call uh, have mo moved on to the renewal space or where they are, are they still sort of responding to it, uh, recovering to it, um, or have they sort of leveraged the opportunity to renew their business processes um, as well. So if we can have you uh, answer the, the poll on the right. We've got about a third of the respondents that have, a uh, third of the attendees, I should say, that have completed the poll. We'll give it another minute or two. Um, of course, it's not compulsory that you fill it out. It's uh, just a nice to know, a nice to understand. Yeah. And maybe while people are uh, filling that out, uh, Usa, we can go to the previous slide, which explains the three I phases might, again. I, I might pose a few questions to Sanjeev, if you don't mind, Chinti, because there's a couple of things of course, that I got yeah. out of that, that session. Uh, um, that new platform that, that Mitra developed for the health sector, I'm curious to know whether it could potentially be adapted or, or modified or simply forklifted across to other uh, industries that might be, you know, heavily involved in consultation. Absolutely, uh, Sean, it, it most certainly can. And in fact, we have already uh, sort of adapted the platform to various uh, industries uh, globally, depending on the needs. So it's a, it's a highly customizable platform that can be rapidly adapted to, to the needs of our customers. Good. Uh, good to know. Second question that that, uh, that put my interest when you were sharing was about the other things that you've already worked on at the moment around payment platforms and process optimization. If a client sort of had to sit there and make a decision about one of those two or three things that they focused on as a priority, and I understand that a business, each business is different, from the experience that you've had with those clients you've worked with, have you guys gleaned any learnings around which ones have delivered the most results, if you like, at this point? Or is it too early to tell? Well, it really depends, Sean, on uh, the nature of the business and, and where they are at right now. 
So typically what we would do in a situation where there is some kind of uncertainty about, you know, what the best way forward is, is to have a, what we call a discovery session to really understand uh, the current status of uh, operations for that company. And then based on that, make recommendations uh, on how to move forward. And, and we, what we found is that depending on the circumstances, you know, any one of those can bring you a, a competitive advantage if you execute um, uh, the, the process properly. Yeah. Okay. Chinti, you want so to add to Yep, sorry. Oh, Chinti, yeah. Any comments? No, I, I think, uh, yeah, no, uh, you, you're abs spot on, uh, Sanjay. I think uh, whenever we go on any digital journey, uh, you know, we talked about uh, that, that health insurer that's, you know, implementing a conversational AI. One of the first things that we did was actually help them uh, predict the ROI of such an implementation. So, you know, it's also our job to ensure that whenever there's an investment in the digital space that they will truly uh, are able to gain the ROI from that implementation. Now, there could be some things that are changing the model completely that may not be able to predict, and it might just be uh, pure predictive uh, uh, predictions at that point. But, you know, we, we help uh, organizations start way at the beginning from, you know, listening to them, uh, you know, working with the businesses, understanding what the challenge is, what the expected outcome is, you know, and how do we make sure that right throughout the process, those are also measurable. Uh, you know, the business outcome at the end of the day is what we are also seeking to ensure that whatever transformation that uh, was implemented delivered that business outcome. Yeah, great. Okay, well, the poll's finished. Uh, some some interesting, interesting results that have come through. I can share it with all attendees if you like. That'll uh, be great, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, let me do that. Give me two seconds. And apply. And I should have a pop-up screen. Yep, it's... Is, uh, it is it coming? It's... Uh, I can see it on the, on the right. So it shows that uh, it looks like a few people have not responded, but of the people that did, uh, you know, uh, a, a majority of them were between recover and renew, and that is really interesting to see and uh, you know appreciate that you know most businesses are you know now recovering from it and are using the business this as an opportunity to actually renew how they operate, uh, and some are still in response. One one of the interesting things also what they say is in this uh, that this is cyclical. So sometimes we might go back into lockdown and we might have to sort of go through this. Uh, however, the cycles become shorter and shorter because we've learned from, from a previous lockdown or uh, the previous situation that we were in. Uh, but it's really interesting and um, I'm actually happy to see the results that uh, at least 25% of our attendees are in the renewal process. That's actually, you know, very positive news. Yeah, it is indeed. All right. All right. All right. So let's move on. Let's sort of break this down a little bit. Um, you know, there was a survey, and if we move on to the next slide, um, uh, done by Gardner, and they did it <coughs> leveraging 265 respondents, board members uh, from the US, EMEA, and APAC. And the question that was posed to them was, you know what uh, uh, is this digital business driving a new model for them is it evolving the enterprise and you know interestingly 69 percent of the board directors said it's accelerated the digital business uh, initiatives uh, as you know post covid or because of the disruption from covid and that's actually you know i noticed it also in the same survey around this expenditure right um, it and technology expenditures up uh, was up 6.9%. It was actually the, the highest variant, if you will, in comparison to others like MNAs and uh, restructuring of the organizations or product development and even R&D. Product development and R&D varied only by about 2.4 and 1.5. So that was really an interesting indication that, you know, technology and digital transformation is at the heart of helping us re recover and renew ourselves uh, post uh, post COVID. 
Um, and, uh, you know, and we, I'd, we'd like to sort of break this down because digital transformation, it's, it's a very broad term. Uh, but in the next slide, I would break it down very simply into three key things that any organization would need to do. If you go to the next slide, Useth. Really, it, it impacts an organization in these three ways. One is, you know, we've got to be looking at how we are operating. Can we operate differently? Can we become more efficient or more effective? How are we connecting with our customers? How are we, are we able to leverage digital transformation to attract, transact, and engage with them? And from a workforce perspective, how, how, are, how is my workforce actually able to evolve through this process? How, how, am I connecting with them differently? Am I communicating with them differently? How do I collaborate? Now, this was digital transformation before COVID. Obviously, post-COVID, we've actually added on a few other things. You know, when it comes to operations, we really have to look at ways to evolve. We don't have our brick and mortar uh, stores sometimes. So how do we evolve through that process? How do we operate in as efficiently po uh, as possible, as effective as possible? And in some situations, maybe completely rip and change some of the operational activities. We've been able to do that. We've, you know, at Meta, we did a restructuring just, to, you know, being part of the services organization. And again, as you saw in, in the first slide that Sanjay went through, you were impacted based on the industries that you served. So, you know, how do we evolve through that? Our operation, uh, you know, operations completely had to probably evolve in this current situation. The same with, you know, how we reach out to our customers. No longer are we thinking about, you know, our customers as, as, you know, marketing to them and selling to them. We really have to find different ways to attract them to us. You know, we are, again, all equal uh, in, in the digital space. You know, uh, how we engage with them really matters for us to be able to attract and grow our customer bases. One thing, though, that got also added to this, given, a, you know, given the fact that the brick and mortar stores went away, we also needed to figure out how we went and delivered services to them. Uh, we had to go to them versus them coming to us. So those are some of the, the key things. I mean, working in, in a pharmaceutical, we'll talk about it uh, even at the end, in, in Australia, you know, one of the things that we talked about and helped them through is actually curbside delivery. How do we make sure that how the pharmacy actually went to the patient and delivered the medicine versus actually the patient coming into a store? Um, and when it comes to the workforce, we talked about agile ways of working. We talked about collaborating in a different ways. But now that we're all working from home, you know, mental health issues are on the rise. We really need to think about duty of care in a very, very different way. Um, so, you know, digital transformation or the fourth industrial revolution was really complex to begin with. But now it's added uh, a few more appendages. But really, it can be broken down into us thinking of our business in these three facets. Again, looking at internally to how do we operate in a way that's fast enough to be able to deliver a service to our customers, and how do we make sure our workforce is is uh, is working in in a in a in an agile and collaborative way so that we can deliver these services to our customers. Simplifying it even further in my next slide. Um, I, you, you can even sort of break it down into two facets, right? There is a concept of digital in and digital out. Digital out is how you, your presence is, is seen to the outside world. You know, your customers are looking for a very personalized experience. They want it to be seamless across if you service in multiple ways, it needs to be seamless. It could be through an omni-channel. You could be, you know, contacting them on the uh, mobile. They could be on the web. It needs to be very, very seamless. Uh, it has to be secure. We cannot, you know, we're collecting information. We're collecting data. Uh, and if it's not secure, we lose uh, our customers as part of it. And it's got to be reliable. That needs to be what we deliver to the outside world as, as an organization. And in order for us to do this really well, we've got to do a few things inside our organization. One is we've got to get a lot more efficient because now in, in a highly consumerized world, we want services done at a snap of a finger. 
uh, we want it now. You know, the the need for now and uh, immediate is more and more the case. And if if you don't service or if you don't respond to your customers, the moment they put something in social media, you're going to find that your brand is now impacted. So, how do we make sure that we are operationally efficient uh, in order to do that? One way to do it is reduce the technical debt. We've had systems that have helped us probably become operationally efficient, but now they're big and clunky. So we've got to really figure out how we you know, reduce that technical debt so that you have systems that are easy, flexible. You're thinking about implementing microservices that bring, bring your technology down into an individual process in order for us for you to respond in a in a you know in a more contained manner, containerized manner. Uh, all of this is to really help you get to market faster. Uh, and you know, and, and in order for us to do that, not only you, do your systems need to change, the people in your organizations need to change, the culture of your organizations need to change, uh, and you know, so that all of this will align. Uh, to your digital uh, strategic goals. You know, there are so many things that you, you know, between being able to deliver the digital out and, you know, focusing on uh, what you have to do in, internally. I guess the question that's on everybody's mind is how can you get started? You know, one, one thing to think about is really rethink your business processes. Uh, you know, in the new normal, you know, if you lay out your business processes and understand which of these Parts of the process have been impacted because of COVID or for because of competition or anything. You know what is that new normal? Uh, understand where you are today and where you want to be, and you know put put things in perspective. It could be leveraging a maturity model of some sort. You know we did uh, something for a client recently where they wanted to actually become agile across a bank. Uh, and we helped them understand exactly where they are across all of their teams. So that they uh, help, uh, they were able to actually move forward and mature their organization holistically, not in pockets. Um, you know, find ways of building, you know, applications and systems that are attractive and can attract customers. Um, and and do all the other systems in a in a far better, faster way. There's, you know, things like low code, no code uh, solutions out there that get an application done in in a matter of days not weeks and those are ways that you can help accelerate what you do internally so that you're able to service your clients appropriately you know uh, find ways to scale your tech you know sometimes uh, you might have really old legacy systems that's difficult to challenge maybe you're an organization that has brought so many uh companies together and there are multiple disparate systems that are servicing your clients you know find a way to build an integration uh, layer that is able to take data and service these clients in a in an efficient way um, uh, combine multiple capabilities and capitalize on multiple cap capabilities of technology uh, in an interesting way so that you can deliver a better outcome one of the most important things in delivering a, a personalized uh, experience is also the insights. You as an organization may hold data about your customers, about what they are, what their likes and dislikes are. Now that, that is insight that you can actually leverage for a better business outcome. And last but not least, you can find ways to really accelerate, uh, you know, the, the development cycle itself that can push us forward. Now, what could be really interesting for us to find out from you, especially those, you know, maybe you're in response being, uh, to the situation, maybe you're trying to recover from it or renew uh, your processes. What would be really interesting for us is to find out where you are and whether you have figured out a way to get through any one of these processes. Um, so maybe we can start our next floor, Sean. Absolutely, we can. Us... I'll crack it open right now. Thank you. All right. So here's the question to our listeners, you know, in your digital adoption, you know, obviously the key is business resilience and growth in 2021, which of the following would be critical for your organization in the upcoming months? Uh, we would love to hear, are you rethinking your business processes in the new normal? <clears throat> Do you know where you are, where you want to move forward to? Are you, you know, looking at ways to build and, uh, you know, build new ways to attract and retain clients? 
Are you looking at ways to build new applications, uh, digital applications, so that it, it services and helps you operate in a better way? Are you looking for scalability in your tech technology that exists today? Or are you looking to combine and capitalize, you know, multiple technologies that you have to be able to service your clients? And, you know, or are you looking for insights for better business outcomes? And last but not least, are you really looking to just get everything moving faster uh, now that you've uh, perhaps recovered uh, and are in renewal mode? Would love to hear from you guys on where you are with this. While we're waiting for everybody to um, uh, complete the poll, again, I've been listening intently, um, and a couple of things came to mind, and particularly the bit about um, where to start. And I think particularly mm -hmm. in this period, I don't want to say that that organisations may be disconnected from their clients, but certainly, I guess, the, and I can speak for our organisation, I guess our path of communication with clients to a degree uh, has been disrupted. And so I anticipate that perhaps for some clients that's the same. And so for them to be thinking about where to start, and you made reference to the insights in particular, if the client doesn't currently, if you'd like, have the, the knowledge or the wherewithal about how to extract that, is that something that Mitra can can jump in and help them help them do and and by doing that help them start to make some, if you like, informed decisions about which way to go forward? Oh, absolutely. Great question, by the way, Sean. You know, a lot of our organizations today are sitting on a wealth of data, data that can tell you a lot of things. Uh, and most definitely insights about the clients, uh, how they've been interacting with you, uh, their likes and dislikes. All of these are, there are patterns that are, you know, in your data that can help you sort of reach out. And, you know, it's, it's at this point, you know, that reach out should maybe not be about marketing your product itself. Maybe it's a check-in to see, you know, you might be monitoring uh, their whereabouts and, and you know where they live and it's in a lockdown area. If you are able to reach out to those customers at this point, given, you know, they're in a, in a, you know, might be in a, a precarious situation, uh, yeah. that will go a long way in retaining and building a strong relationship. So you can leverage that data in many ways. You know, uh, you know, before the pandemic, people would leverage the data to actually help, you know, do market automation, uh, you know, have people uh, consider next best action to help upsell or cross-sell their products. Data was yeah. used for many things, uh, and that yeah. still uh, remains. However, you know, the you know data can also be used for that outreach and and reaching out and caring for your customers. Also, in this point uh, of time, will go a long, long way. Yeah, and it's you know it's 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 a really good point. Sanjeev talked about it in his presentation about um, understanding how our customers have changed, and if I can just take one minute to talk about what we have done. Um, some of the clients that are on this call would perhaps have noticed that they're getting monthly reports from us. Uh, prior to COVID-19, we weren't doing that, uh, but we took the view that, you know, one of the things that comes from this, if you like, separation of not being able to communicate in as free a way with, with, with people being, you know, isolated, if I can use that word, uh, we wanted to make sure that we gave clients better visibility of what we are doing for them. Absolutely. Uh, because we were concerned that clients might be thinking this period of not being able to have that full ease of access, uh, that they could be potentially wondering, you know, what what's happening on what's happening in the background with our IT? You know, is it being taken care of? Yeah. Are the normal things that we expect to happen in the background in this environment still continuing to happen? So the idea of us Absolutely. leveraging that data within our own systems that we're just talking about, uh, to me, was a no-brainer that we should do that. So um, thanks for answering that question. The poll has closed. Uh, we've got a very That's mixed, okay. uh, a very mixed result there. I don't think you can see that, but uh, I'll pass back to you for some comments. Sure. I'm waiting for the results to be uh, displayed. Oh, interesting. Uh, so 
if I remember the, the so very interesting. We appear to have lost Chinti. Sanjeev, can you see the data? It's uh, an interesting result. We uh, we have we have uh, rethinking your business. Sean, yes, Sanjeev. Yeah, I, I I did see it briefly, but uh, it somehow disappeared from view. Okay, so rethink your business. There was uh, a fairly. Oh yeah, I got it. Common response to that. Uh, building new ways. Uh, quite a few responses to that as well. Uh, Chinti appears to yeah, come back. So I might pass back over to her. Can you see the results still, Chinti? Yep, I can certainly see it now. Uh, great. So I, I think as anticipated, uh, you know, people are looking at rethinking uh, their business processes. That's great to hear. And, uh, you know, and kudos to them because it's the beginning of the renewal process, like we talked about, uh, you know, building applications in an accelerated way. Uh, again, uh, fantastic there as well. And uh, a few and building in... new ways of uh, retaining and attracting customers. Oh, absolutely. I think we've seen that as well, isn't it, Sanjeev, with, with so many sort of uh, self-care apps coming in, uh, and it's very interesting. Um, uh, and, and, you know, before the pandemic, I think some of the self-care apps, even, you know, the best banks in Europe, there was very little uh, penetration. Uh, so, and, and it could be for various reasons. It could be for, uh, you know, the convenience of actually, you know, going into the bank and getting it all done by talking to a human. Uh, but, you know, if you have designed uh that engagement in an interesting way, you know, the, the self-care apps that have designed it in that way have actually had more success. Uh, and, you know, even the others that, you know, might have not had a great experience might have even lost a client. So what's interesting is when it comes to brand, uh, you know, it's becoming less and less important. Uh, but the experience that, that you drive through these uh, applications is what's kind of uh, attracting and keeping the clients. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an interesting fact. Um, so you're, everybody is also looking to scale the technology that they have. Um, uh, and I guess, like I, like I talked about, you know, helping integrate through the multiple systems that you have, uh, scaling the, the applications that you already have, you know, putting in, a, in you know, APIs, uh, putting in integrations, making sure those interactions are secured so that you're tapping into the various systems and still being able to respond to your clients. Again, a, another really, really great way. Um, so let me talk about some of Mitra services aligned to these. If you go to the next slide. So uh, Mitra has very specific uh, services and solutions that can be offered as part of each of these asks, if you will. Um, you know, we'll come in, you know, for those that are thinking about uh, your business process in a new way, we provide the New Frontier Consulting, which is essentially us coming in, running a dis discovery on your current processes, really understand the touch points that have been impacted and designing new ways of, of essentially building that process. Now, we, the difference for us also is, you know, we are technology agnostic. We want to bring the most viable product uh, based on ROI to you. So as part of this, we can help you sort of map out what that journey would be like, uh, if you will. It's it's not something that can happen overnight. It's a process of defining that process and then putting it into, you know, various phases of, of uh, transformation. Uh, you know, very few people, you know, there's one person really wanted to, uh, you know, know where they were and understood we certainly have several maturity assessments that we can run as well. Uh, maybe based on your organization, how agile you are, do you have DevOps processes in place? 
um, you know, where are you, where are you from a digital maturity perspective? We can certainly run those maturity uh, assessments as well to, to that you understand your pain points. Uh, and maybe you are large organizations that have various levels of maturity. You're able to sort of bring them into one level, if you will. Um, uh, lots of people are, are looking to build mobile and web apps. Uh, you know, uh, we've got very interesting case studies that we'll uh, talk you through uh, in building these applications very, very quickly. One of the most interesting things I can speak about here is, you know, during this time, uh, a telco uh, provider actually, an uh, Opco wanted to build a mobile app to uh, do their self care. But instead of actually just building it for uh, self care, you know, given the people at home and given that gaming was on the rise, they actually built a gaming portal to help attract and retain clients. So we can sort of think about new ways of attracting. It might not be just servicing it at the pure sense of the way, but servicing it based on the need and based on the um, I guess, uh, the, that current situation. Uh, from being able to rapidly build solutions overnight, we have several platforms that are low code, no code. This is a major trend at the moment in digital transformation. If you look at, you know, we are partners with companies like Creatio, which are, you know, formed on the basis of low code, no code for business process management, for uh, sales automation, uh, et cetera, CRM. Uh, and we can certainly help look at those, even for building some web applications uh, and mobile applications. We have options that we can consider here. Uh, scalable technology everywhere, you know, scale it at the right time outside of integration. We can help you become cloud enabled uh, uh, and cloud first. So you're really, you know, growing and scaling the business as required. You know, it, it's also a mechanism to drop your costs. Um, you know, combining multiple technologies and bringing them into one is, is the integration I talked about. And what Sean, you and I talked about data, data analytics, data warehousing, getting that insight to, uh, you know, uh, better know your client and better find better ways of servicing your clients. And last but not least, you know, uh, DevOps, it shouldn't be just a word that people use. It, it is truly a way that they can uh, accelerate how you develop something and then move it to operations through a DevOps cycle. And this requires you to think about uh, the way people operate from a delivery perspective. Uh, you know, are you agile enough to, are you automated enough to, is your architecture designed through things like microservices, et cetera, containerized architecture to move things faster from development to operations. So uh, these are some of the ways that we can certainly help you. Uh, and helping us, uh, we can maybe talk through some of the case studies uh, in the next few slides. Mm. We've broken them down into healthcare, real estate, uh, constructions, banking, financial services, hospitality, and FNB. And as you can see in each one of these uh, customers, you recognize a few names uh, Ramsey Hospitals, Terry White, Leapin, uh, Eagle Boys Pizza, which became Pizza Hut, uh, all Australian logos, um, and several from the UK and Europe regions as well, as, as well as Caledonia, I believe, is, is Australian. Um, so we, we'll walk you through a few of these. We won't obviously spend time. There are some really interesting uh, stories behind each of them, and maybe we can go through this in the next slide. Sanjeev, do you want to take a crack at uh, a few, and I'll follow suit? <clears throat> sure, Chinti, thanks. So maybe I'll uh, start with uh, Terry White came out, uh, one of our longstanding clients, and we basically help them integrate with their, uh, you know, end, endpoints, uh, essentially the, the stores. So we've uh, integrated their main platform with 450 stores across Australia. Uh, both uh, in terms of a point of sales integration as well as an e-commerce integration. Uh, now, this solution is being used for uh, supply chain optimization, optimal pricing, uh, designing and defining the ideal product portfolio to be uh, placed in a particular store, for, for example. So all of that was uh, made possible through Mitra, Mitra's 
innovative approach to to bring all of these platform all of these stores together and create a single platform analyze the data use the insights and push it back to the stores so that you know they operate in uh, the most uh, profitable and efficient way and also in turn improve uh, the, the terry white brand another example would be infix this is one of our uk clients um, we've worked with them to provide a platform for uh, integrating a solution for scheduling surgeries with nhs hospitals so um, you know the, the objective around this is to to optimize the usage of uh, theaters in hospitals um, you may be aware that uh, approximately 30 percent of the time um, there are slippages in scheduled surgeries and theaters are not fully fully optimally used so, so this is a, a huge problem in the uh, in the nhs and and this solution was able to once again integrate and provide a, a, a fairly complex algorithm that was used to optimize scheduling for for the hospital systems in the uk uh, a third example another australian example is ramsey healthcare one of the largest health uh, you know hospital chains in uh, in uh, the country where we've built a, a customer experience management platform uh, increased the uh, capability for, for optimizing search etc so that you know the customers have uh, a much improved user experience. Um, uh, this is primarily around uh, maternity care and ability for uh, potential customers to to really understand the service offerings of the hospital chain and uh, correspond with uh, with the with the the marketing teams at Ramsey uh, as examples. Chinti, do you want to cover a few more? On yeah, uh, why don't we have uh, uh, Plum House? It's, it's a construction firm uh, in the US. Uh, you know, we may have a few people from the construction field. But this is an interesting implementation. Now, they contacted us uh, at the very beginning. Uh, and as you know, the US is, is, is in, in, in a terrible plight when it comes to their, um, you know, COVID patients and the numbers rising. And this construction firm really wanted to find an efficient way that would do the pre-screening to be able to get people back into work. So uh, we actually leveraged the Dynamics platform that you heard of uh, to actually do the employee screening. So they would screen the day before, uh, you know, answer a key set of questions approved uh, through regulators, uh, as well as some of the questions that a plumber was on to uh, ask the employees uh, and actually, you know, approve them to come back into work or have them uh, get notified of uh, them being quarantined for a few weeks. Uh, so this has really been in operation. They've saved several hours of, you know, people coming in at the, uh, you know, uh, to the at the beginning of the day, filling in lots of forms and, uh, you know, either being able to work or being turned over and not really knowing how best to manage their schedules, et cetera. So uh, that's, that is a, probably a great sort of uh, a good response story that they've really um, moved into even renewing some of their processes and how they manage uh, each of the, the construction sites. Um, Leapin is a great example, uh, as, you, as, you're, as you're probably familiar, they uh, help uh, distribute uh, and manage NDIS plans. Uh, and we built the payment platform for them. Now, this is an interesting choice of either buying or building. And in this situation, they wanted more control. They wanted a, a cost optimized way of actually building the, the payment distribution platform. Um, and we process several millions of, uh, of, of, of payments, if you will, on a daily basis in this platform. And we, you know, as of a few weeks ago, moved all of their employees over to the new platform as well. Um, KB, uh, I'll talk a little bit, maybe pick a few things from the banking sector as well. KB is a great example. It's uh, Comencini Bank is one of the society general banks uh, or in, in based in the Czech Republic. Uh, we've actually helped. Uh, this bank came to us uh, as they were completely renewing and uh, changing and building a new bank. 
Uh, the ask was, you know, we're moving into a new bank, but we really need to understand how mature we are from a DevOps perspective. Uh, we're a large bank with several key uh, uh, tribes, as, as they call it, teams across the board. Uh, and we really don't know where we are with each of each of them and the maturity level. So we've assessed 115 teams uh, uh, and 115 team members in 13 different teams in 28 different business areas. And we've been able to give them a, a scoring based on DORA metrics uh, on really helping them understand where they are from a maturity perspective. Um, you know, Monitor Money Bank, uh, again, another Czech bank, um, you know, that's an, another great example of being able to uh, scale their business and move faster into uh, in, into the in, and in having a digital presence. They're one of the leaders in that market uh, and they attribute into, into the integration platform that we helped build it. Uh, and in, through this integration platform, there's between 12 to million uh, daily integration calls that are there. Uh, and we do it at, you know, uh, it says thousand, but I think we were hitting close to thousand five hundred, thousand nine hundred transactions per second. Um, um, last but not least, uh, maybe I can talk about uh, Eagle Boys, uh, which later became uh, Pizza Hut. And here, the, the idea was to make sure that we eliminate failures of orders uh, per day and, and, and sustaining those orders. It was about building in a predictive model that predicted what each uh, location required so they, they could fulfill these orders in a successful manner and didn't have to disappoint. Uh, and that was done through data and predictive analytics and integration also with things like, you know, what's the weather like? Is there a game going on? Uh, do they anticipate a higher demand at a certain period of time? So all that through uh, the data analytics as well. So um, just a few stories I, that I that we thought might be interesting for you. Again, a mix back so to help explain and demonstrate that you know we are digital transformation experts and we've worked in multiple domains, and that too is an advantage because in in today's world there is a cross pollination of of efforts. We are talking to telcos about how they can assist in healthcare, uh, et cetera, right? And we're talking to banks about how they can assist in managing somebody's accounting. So the business models are changing and and uh, uh, digitization is a great way to expand, you know, more and more uh, your business horizons more and more. Uh, just very quickly, we'll go to the next slide to introduce our teams. Lucette? Uh, yep, there we go. There we go. So a little bit about Dimitra. You've heard from Sanjeev and I. Uh, we are both. Uh, interestingly, we've uh, our, our careers have intertwined quite a few. We're uh, both twenty-year veterans in the technology field, uh, and most recently joined uh, Mitra. I'm as the CEO, and him as the CEO. Uh, Mitra is a company that was founded in 2012. Uh, we support over 125 clients. Interesting thing. Our first customer is still our customer. So uh, customer retention and uh, servicing them and creating value for them is really, really important to us. Uh, we have 200 employees situated globally. We are, head well, we are headquartered in the UK. Uh, we have offices in Australia. Uh, our director uh, in Australia is a gentleman called Callum De Silva, uh, based in Brisbane. Uh, we also service this region through uh, regional heads. Uh, I think they're on the call as well, Puma Lee as well as Sangeeta, who are running the region and supporting this region. So whenever there is there is a question, you know, we'll be happy to sort of get on, uh, a, a, a start a conversation with you, uh, come meet you if that's possible, and uh, take it forward in partnership with uh, TechWise and Sean. Sean, over to, to you. Thank you very much, Chinti, and, and thank you, Sanjeev, as well. Um, apologies, we have run over time. We, we did kick off a few minutes late, which is often the case when you run webinars. Not everybody can jump on exactly at 3 o'clock, but we do apologise that we've gone over time. Um, to wrap up, I hope everybody got something out of the session. We did have breakout rooms, but I appreciate with this going over time, you may not have time to do it. We certainly would like to engage with you each individually. So if there is a particular point 
of discussion uh, or, or interest that you'd like to cover off on us, uh, with us, sorry, please let us know. Uh, like I said, we had three objectives. We hope that uh, we've hit all those three objectives, but please give us feedback. We will be running a series of these webinars and, and the I guess the, um, the next webinars will dive a bit deeper into the particular topics. You saw Chinthi cover all of the capabilities that Mitra Innovation has. Uh, but what we'll try to do is we'll try to focus in on a couple of key ones for each subsequent webinar uh, to give you a bit more insight to perhaps give you more, uh, I guess, knowledge around what might be applicable for your business and the direction you might want to head. Um, but for now, um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, I'll leave the room open for a few minutes in case anybody wants to type in a, a question of the panel rather than us jump to the breakout rooms. Uh, but otherwise, I want to say thank you very much for everybody for attending. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. And uh, we hope to be talking with you soon. Uh, stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.